Alfa Romeo was working really hard to ingratiate itself with US car buyers. The Giulia sedan was a great first step. It's a brilliant car that we really, really like. But we also know that across all car segments, buyers are starting to abandon sedans in favor of SUVs. So of course it makes sense that the next step in Alfa Romeo's product rollout is an SUV. Called Stelvio, it uses the exact same platform and the exact same engines as the Julius sedan, but packaging into this much more useful SUV body. Let's take a closer look. How does it look? Seen normally in profile, the Stelvio might not stand out too much from the latest crop of luxury crossovers, but from every other angle, it's really striking. Abundant curves and ripples in the sheet metal produce beautiful highlights and silhouettes. The McLaren-like curved LED running lights combined with the Trilobo nose design make a really strong impression in your rearview mirror, as do the yellow painted brake calipers and 19-inch wheels on this model. It definitely gets attention on the street. How's the storage? Although the sloping rear window cuts into vertical space, overall the Stelvio's cargo area is deep and roomy. You get a generous 18.5 cubic feet of space. And if you fold the back seats down, that expands to 56 cubic feet of space. If you had, say, three suitcases from away you wanted to store back there, well, you wouldn't have any trouble at all. Cabin storage is only average for an SUV of this size. This center console compartment isn't that spacious. There are two cup holders ahead of the shifter, plus space in the doors for bottles. Is it roomy? There's tons of adjustability for the front seats and you'll find plenty of leg and headroom to get comfortable behind the wheel. The back seat is reasonably spacious too, though tall passengers sitting behind a tall driver will find legroom a little pinched. How does the interior feel? There's a lot to like inside the Stelvio. I like all these aluminum trim pieces on this model, the three-spoke steering wheel with its big stop button integrated onto the wheel, a lot of the leather and upholstery in here. But there are also some things that feel kind of cheap for an SUV of this price range. Some of the dull plastics around the shifter and around the USB port. And this soft touch dash topper just isn't quite up to the standard I expect in a car at this price range. Is it well equipped? The standard equipment list is generous with leather, LED tail lights, a power lift gate, push button start, and bi on headlights all included as standard. Moving up the trim levels, you can get things like Brembo brakes and big shift pedals with the sport trim levels, or more luxurious touches in the Lusso or luxury models. Available options include pretty much everything you expect in this class, including active safety features, an upgraded sound system, remote start, and various wheel sizes. How's the infotainment system? Though a 6.5 inch screen is standard, this Stelvio has the optional 8.8 .8 inch display that you operate by a rotary controller on the center console. As I found in the Julia sedan, clear graphics and a succinct menu structure are pretty easy to get used to, with navigation, Bluetooth calling and music, and voice recognition capabilities all baked in. No, it doesn't support Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Those features should be ready by this fall, but Alpha says you won't be able to upgrade if you've already bought a Stelvio before then so pay attention to that if that's an important feature for you. Is it a good daily driver? The Stelvio is definitely on the sportier side of the spectrum, but it's still very, very livable in everyday driving. Part of that's because I can choose to be in the more comfortable of the three drive modes. I have D and A for dynamic, natural, and advanced efficiency. And most of the time I just leave it in N, which makes the steering pretty light, makes the throttle response pretty reasonable. And I really do like driving this car. It feels very nimble and light on its feet in the city. The steering's light and everything. There are a couple of things though that aren't perfect for everyday driving. Visibility straight out the back or over your shoulder isn't great because of that really aggressive sloping roofline. Though I do have big 
rearview mirrors, blind spot detection, and a backup camera to help me see around this car. The brake feel also isn't great in urban driving. This car, like the Julia on which it's based, has a brake by wire system, a kind of like some hybrids or electrics used, so you don't necessarily get the most natural feeling from the brake pedal. It can take a little while to get used to just how it feels when you go to stop, and it's definitely off-putting at first. And then the 2.0-litre turbo engine in this model. It's a really, really nice engine, and it doesn't really have much turbo lag, but once the turbo's spooled up, sometimes you do feel it surging as if the boost level is changing a little bit, and it can just be a little distracting in those mid-range acceleration moments. Is it fun to drive? I think this is the greatest thing about the Stelvio to me, is that it always feels really fun and exciting to drive from the moment you get behind the wheel, especially obviously when you have it dialed up to the dynamic mode. The steering is extremely quick, in fact Alpha says it's the quickest ratio in its competitive class. The 2 liter engine is really punchy, you get 280 horsepower and 306 pound-feet of torque, which is more than any of this car's direct rivals. 0 to 60 is claimed at about 5.4 seconds, which I certainly believed based on driving this car. It's just fun all the time, it's very eager to go through bends, a lot of acceleration on tap. This model isn't a sport trim, so I don't have paddle shifters, but I can still shift the 8-speed automatic manually myself with the shifter. But you know, in dynamic mode, the transmission behaves itself really well anyway. It always seems to pick the right gear I want when I'm driving on twisty roads. Now, if you're really looking for fun from your Alfa Romeo Stelvio, you want to wait a little bit. There's a Quadrifoglio model coming. Uh, it won't be in dealers until the beginning of 2018, probably. But like the Julia Quadrifoglio sedan, it's going to have 505 horsepower, much upgraded brakes and suspension. And if that drives anything like the Julia Quadrifoglio does, it's going to be a killer, killer SUV to get behind the wheel of. How's the fuel economy? At 22 miles per gallon city and 28 MPG highway, the Stelvio's fuel economy is roughly on par with other all-wheel drive luxury crossovers of this size. There's a stop-for-start feature too to help save gas in urban driving. How much is it? Starting from around $42,000 with standard all-wheel drive, the Stelvio's pricing falls right in line with competing luxury models. Load up on all the options and this SUV can end up around $57,000. The model we're testing today is just over $52,000. What are the negatives? As with the Alfa Romeo Giulia, some of the Stelvio's interior materials don't necessarily match up to the quality we've come to expect from similarly priced luxury rivals. And I think that some customers looking for non-sporty driving are going to find this car a little stiffly sprung and maybe be annoyed by the inconsistent brake feel that we talked about. Who should buy it? If you're looking for a stylish and sporty SUV, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio absolutely fits the bill. It's great to drive and it'll stand out from all the German luxury SUVs that all your neighbors are buying. It's absolutely the perfect next step for Alfa Romeo's return to the US market. If you liked this Why Buy video, be sure to click the like button and scroll down and leave us a comment if you've got any questions. You also might want to go back and look at our Alfa Romeo Giulia Why Buy from March. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get a new Why Buy video like this every week, as well as tons of other great video content. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at motorone.com.